Well, generally, under His Holiness, there is two main organizations. You know, one is monastic, and one is a general administrative. And so, you know, monastic organization is totally independent, and they are usually uh, um, run by elder uh, sangha members, elder monastics. You know, such as the Dorje Lopen, um, the Raja Master, and the Abbot of the monastery. You know, these two are the key figures. And then the Chant Masters and Discipline Masters. You know, these uh, elder Sangha rules the whole monastic organization. So it's very independent. At the same time, His Holiness appoints in the key figures there. And he's uh, constantly in, in touch. and. Um, organizing basically the education system. And his sons would separate the educations quite well, like, you know, mm, the ritual trainings, the, the practice trainings, the study training, you know, everything. So that's monastic organization. And then the monastic college organization is also independent, uh, which uh, his holiness gave the work to his uh, regents. Uh, to take over, you know, until, you know, his return. And so it's been mainly managed by his eminences and uh, primarily by Jango Kontra um, yeah, Rumbachin did a wonderful job, and I've worked with him uh, at the Shedra in the Monastic College, and I also did uh, work with Rumbachin uh, to build a library there. <clears throat> and so, yes, uh, is, uh, Monastery College is an independent organization. And then the administrative of, uh, organization is uh, for, for lay and also for monastics uh, administration. That's where my father came in. Like he was the head of the administration. And so His Holiness usually <clears throat> did not uh, involve in any day to day business. It was totally up to my father uh, what the organization needs to do. And he, he decides everything. And he doesn't really go to his holiness for uh, nitty gritty things, you know, unless it's a it's a it's a very important issue, and especially when it is a spiritual issue, then definitely he just totally relies on his holiness as a decision. But other mundane things, uh, basically he decides. And whenever there's any mistakes made, you know, it's his mistake, and not his holiness's. Um, and if there's any accomplishment. You know, it of course uh, comes from his Holiness' guidance, you know, but he accomplished. <clears throat> and so, therefore, administrative uh, was pretty independent. Uh, but my father goes to his Holiness every morning. You know, that's how it was, the structure. And every morning he goes to his Holiness and uh, spent sometimes an hour, sometimes, you know, shorter, sometimes longer. And so his Holiness, and they discuss different issues. And then he goes to his office, <clears throat> and he worked there till sometimes 11 at night time. Uh, so as a kid, when I was growing up, it was a little difficult. You know, my father was never there at home at night. You know, uh, the earliest he comes home is like 8. You know, so <clears throat> we always had late dinner. And then after dinner, he doesn't stop working. <laughs> you know, he, he brings work at home. And after dinner, he was working on, like, you know, drawing the new plan for monastery, such as Delhi Monastery. It uh, was uh, actually started by my father. Um, and so he was drawing that when I was growing up. And uh, since he was a little, getting a little old, and he asked me to help him to draw some lines. So I was working with him. And you know, we'll work until like 12, uh, midnight or 1 or whatever. Uh, and so he really worked, he was really a uh, hard worker, uh, worked constantly. And not only he worked in offices, but he would also go into the f like a field. If there's a construction going on, he'll go there and nail things. Like he'll dress up as a construction worker and he's just there working with everyone. And so <clears throat> uh, like that, so daily, on a daily basis, you know, he did take care of most of the businesses, uh, the administration part, you know. And then uh, His Holiness was very clear about his vision, you know, and he will tell my father or monastic elders 
or the you know whoever is responsible, he'll tell very clearly his vision, and then it's up to them how com- how how they accomplish it. So, I, I feel there's a, like a great uh, balance. Like, you know, he's clear about his vision and giving guidance. At the same time, he leaves room, you know, for them to accomplish in uh, whatever way. And and many of the you know uh, detailed staffs are not really appointed by Karmapa. You know, but it's chosen by the administration and the monastic sangha. Um, and it was a very uh, loving organization. It was not like a hardworking, like with no personal contact. But it's a very loving organization. Like his sons would send his attendant every day to my father in the morning to greet him, to say, you know, good morning and how are you? Because there's no telephone that time, you know. Uh, the later there was an intercom, they connected an intercom, and his sons would call every morning to my father and say, Hello, how are you today? You know, and he's giving some auspicious uh, blessings and words every day. You know, uh, when that was not there, he sent his attendant, personal attendant, every day. You know, uh, sometimes with blessings and things like that. So it was really like personal, uh, very loving, very caring, and also on my father's side, uh, like he had no other interest except to serve Kamapa. Like his devotion to Kamapa was so powerful, you know. Just seeing him and being with him and growing up with him, you know, I learned so much about devotion and trust and the guru, uh, guru's disciple relationship. And my first practice I learned when I was young was Kamapa as a guru yoga uh, from my father, uh, my brother, and myself, and so. Yeah, you know, his main practice is Kamapa, and his main focus is to serve His Holiness. And that's how he died in 1982, uh, serving His Holiness. He was in Bhutan, uh, tried to get a loan for building the Delhi Monastery, and that's how he passed away in Bhutan. Uh, in a way, of course, it's sad that I didn't see him, you know, die. I wasn't there, but at the, on the other hand, I'm happy because he died doing what he loved to do. It was serving Kamapa. So, therefore, there's like a really great, uh, you know, love and passion and, uh, uh, you know, so much personal joy, you know, uh, for him to serve his oneness. And though also his oneness has such a love and great, you know, kindness extending towards him every day, you know. So, seeing that. You know their relationship, the administration and the work was really very, very loving, very loving and very, you know, heart. Um, uh, there's a lot of heart, you know, not just uh, hours and you know uh, productivity. You know, that's not the key point. The key point is like this love and joy and passion, and then you can naturally, you know you can naturally accomplish. When you have so much love and passion, yes, you can accomplish anything. So productivity also goes up naturally. But that was not the key point. (laughs) I think we need that here.